Welcome to Pedo Teeth Talk, brought to you by the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, a podcast show that delivers cutting edge ideas for the professionals specializing in pediatric dentistry. Thank you for tuning in to Pedo Teeth Talk, where we bring you the contemporary issues important to you and your practice. Brought to you by the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry. I am your host, Joel Berg. And thank you to our Pedo Teeth Talk sponsor, Euphredi, for helping us bring you great content. We couldn't do this without them. Visit them at www.hufreedy.com. That's H U Freedy, F R I E D Y.com. Well, we're here today with Dr. Bobby Elliott, who's going to talk to us about marketing your dental practice, something on everyone's mind today. Wasn't the case 20, 30 years ago, but today it, I think it's almost essential. So, to intro, to introduce Dr. Elliott, he's from originally from Louisville, Kentucky. We graduated from Louisville School of Dentistry. He did his residency at Chapel Hill in North Carolina. He's a diplomate of the American Board of Pediatric Dentistry and an adjunct clinical professor at both University of North Carolina and the University of Louisville, both those schools of dentistry. He lectures throughout the year to other dentists, specialists, team members, and residents. And in his not so much free time, as he puts it, he has founded his own pediatric dental consulting business called Pedo Springboard Inc. to help residents and pediatric dentists successfully start their own practice. He has also co-founded a second consulting business called Pediatric Dental Directions to help private practitioners establish legacy leadership and a positive work culture. So, Bobby, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, this is a really important subject, marketing your practice in an ever more competitive world and also the need to educate. So I'm going to start off with, um, do I have to market my practice or could I just mm -hmm. not do it? I think if you want to survive in this day and age, you certainly need to um, be smart in how you market your practice. So, yeah, so you're saying, yeah. So, so I mean, I, I would think that this is something that's sort of generational. So, for a baby boomer, been practicing 25, 35 years, they're probably going to be less inclined, or and then let's say a millennial, or was that that the case or not? I think you have to change with the times for sure, Joel. I, I can tell you 20 years ago when I opened my practice, I checked in with my colleagues in the area. How, how are you all managing getting the word out that you're open? And, and they said that if you build it, they will come. Uh, this was right as the Internet was, was taking off and, and we were just developing our initial web pages. But I can tell you, I had one yellow page ad. And people will probably say, what are the yellow pages? <laughs> but yeah, I, one I remember yellow those. Yeah, one yellow page ad that was small and, uh, and and basically just went to my local colleagues, other pediatric dentists, and said, "Hey, I want you to know that um, I'm considering coming to the area." And they said, "Thank you. We need all the help we can get." They actually helped feed my practice with new patients because they were so booked out. But back in that that day and age, there was no marketing of specialists. People right. helped each other and. It was referral based. It wasn't necessary. Yeah, it wasn't necessary. Right. So you told me before that there are a, a couple of different categories of marketing, uh, namely external and internal. Could you just briefly explain? It's it's obvious, but just tell us what you mean by external internal marketing. Sure, sure. External marketing is anything that you're going to utilize uh, on the outside of your practice to the public. Um, advertising, magazines, newspaper articles, uh, magazine articles to mothers and moms groups, anything that's on the outside of your practice uh, versus, say, the inside, which is your, your patient families that go out, your team members that go out any of your internal handouts that you give directly to your patients and patient families to get them excited to go out and, and tell their friends about your practice and your, your team. So when you, when you talk to, when, as in your consulting work, when you talk to people, you discuss those sort of in separate categories and give a plan in each of those two external internal categories. Is that right? That is correct. That's correct. Okay. So, I mean, you're marketing your business is what you're doing and you, you have different aspects of, uh, it, of this business. So how would you describe business marketing? What does that mean? Um, business marketing to me is how you create a buzz about your business. And in this case, how do you create a buzz about a wonderful pediatric dental practice that caters to young children, toddlers, adolescents, patients with special needs? Uh, I believe that this generation that brings their children to us 
are still haunted by their experiences as a child themselves. And it's, it's often that I look at a parent in the corner of a child's restorative appointment and I see them cringing in the corner. And I think to myself, I need to just stop and ask that mom or dad to step outside in the hallway and just check in and say, did you have a bad dental experience as a child? I see you, you know, kind of when I turn the drill on kind of cringing. And, and it's interesting how many times if you get to that core fear, that core pain that they realize that you're bringing something up that, that may be subconscious to them, but it is coming out physically in their behavior. And I feel like that that generation has not so great memory. So for me to change that perception through an internal marketing technique to let them know that dentistry has changed a lot, to acknowledge yeah. what they went through or that many of us went through that wasn't so pleasant and to let them know, reassure them that, hey, it's different now. It so is, it's a positive buzz you want to create. You want to, a good absolutely. Thing. You want to be part of a good thing with people. So what are, I mean, uh, marketing has different meanings to different people. Maybe you could just tell us some of the unique and creative things that you've, you've done and you've, you've talked to people about to market one's practice. Sure. I think some of the, the more creative out side the box situations that I have been exposed to. Some people have uh, rented out the movie screen that they show ads before the movie starts in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. Right. They Seen rent those. that out. Yep. So you can flash your business card up there or your website. Is that expensive? Uh, all, that you're is in Raleigh. Expensive. How much does that cost in Raleigh? I'm just curious. Is that an expensive $12, or $12,000. For how many runs? Into, I believe it's it's a guaranteed uh, three times before the movie, and then you can choose how many days you want it to run. Weekends are more expensive, but it's pretty okay. pricey. I was surprised. Yeah, it is. Okay. Must be some, a factor. Another, what are some of the other things you can do? Some of the other you know, big ticket items, I think, like people will rent out billboards along the road. <laughs> This is so outside of what we ever had to feel like we needed to do when we were first opening our practice. Nobody, it's kind of an it extreme. And when you when you think about the baby boomer era and the idea that we it was sort of viewed negatively to market, and I understand the need to do it now, the billboard sounds like completely the opposite of what I was taught about that. You know what I mean? It's like the extreme end of it, right? It is. We never felt we had to market. And nowadays, you almost you, you die if you don't market. You have to mm -hmm. keep up with the pack that's out there, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't like right. that. But, you know, it's kind of like saying you want to hide from Big Brother. There's no way that you can come off the grid and still feel like you're functioning in, in a digital society. And a couple others, maybe just give us one or two more of the creative things. So the, the, and these are the more unique ones. These aren't the ones that I necessarily employ, but I, I, some of the more creative ones that were out there, people are utilizing the grocery cart, uh, for advertising. Ah. There, there's a blank spot right there that you're looking at as you're putting groceries in. Uh, and that's an, another, uh, marketing avenue that people have utilized. Hmm. Uh, and I also think therapy. You could have dogs, healthy, you could have healthy messages, like healthy eating messages, right? Eat healthy you, eating. That's right. You know, that's right. right. When they're, you know, when they're pick, thinking of picking up that candy and throwing it in there, right? <laughs> and, and just reading a label learning how to read a label mm -hmm. and looking for the hidden sugars, the high fructose corn syrup, uh, that right. can be a reminder at the yeah. grocery store. Okay. And, and a therapy dog is, is another final one that I have seen become more and more popular over the last couple of years, uh, is bringing a, a dog into the practice that is uh, trained and certified, but to decrease anxiety, to uh, welcome young kids who are, are used to having pets. Uh, I think the kicker with that one is you have to find a team member or one of the doctors who's well Willing to take responsibility to give, provide a home for that therapy dog. Yeah, I think dogs are great. That's fantastic. So, what, what in your practice? Tell us some specific things that you're doing to make this marketing work for you. What's worked? So, over the last twenty years, I have seen this evolve. Um, I think to some really wonderful things that we've used. We've had to. Uh, recreate some of the, the different scenarios. But I think one of my favorite ones is getting the parents involved. Uh, once a quarter, I would randomly select 10 parents and ask them if they would be willing to go out to dinner um, on, on the office, of course. And just to have a roundtable discussion and just as a stripped down human being, person to person, just say, hey, what do you guys love about our practice? What can we continue to do or to refine to make your experience the best it can be? And in that same breath, ask them, what is something that has bothered you or that you have felt could be improved? The fact that you're asking them makes them feel important and that they're a part of your patient family. That's great. Uh, I can't tell you how many times parents have said it meant so much 
that you asked me to do this or that you even cared enough to ask us. It's so easy you told to me, take yeah. the, the no, path ahead, of least please. resistance. No. Yeah, the path of least resistance is to not ask because oftentimes people are scared of what they might hear. Right. So they just don't ask. So you told me a couple other things that you do. I, I just wanted to mention a couple others that you had told me about that were interesting. And you talk about an Instagram photo board. I'm thinking of HIPAA right away. What about HIPAA on that one? So maybe you could talk about that. <laughs> the Instagram photo board is is a large kind of square piece of cardboard that's been cut out with a window that has our website and Instagram uh, page on there that pe- that people can take their picture with their phone and post their pictures onto their Facebook page or their Instagram account. But it all comes back to branding. Um, if you mm-hmm. have a brand on there or your website, people are going to be able to market for you in a very creative way that isn't coming through your office, but by way of them having a good experience and using that. I remember going to a pediatric dentist office in uh, Seoul, South Korea, a few years ago. I've been there a few times and they just put all the patient's pictures on the wall. We can't do that here, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> right, a little right, bit different, right. but, uh, but yeah. So uh, you mentioned a Christmas parade since we're Christmas season now. Uh, what, what, what does a Christmas parade have to do with marketing your practice? Our, again, it comes back to branding, but our um, city, our town does a Christmas parade every year, and they will actually provide the float for you. Uh, we just gather our team members and our our team members' children, and we ride on the parade. I, I feel like it, you, when you see your patients or they see you in a community-driven event, that it ties you to where people live, and they make it makes you – appear to be a part of the community that you're giving back. And, and, and we are, we, we are supporting our, our local vendors and our community ourselves. But I think it just makes you come across as a, a more connected practice that is relationship based when the, the, your patients can see you interacting in the community. I like that. I like the connection of the community part. So I want to ask you, and I knew you've told me a lot of other things, but you've hit some of the highlights, but Sounds a little pricey. You mentioned the one thing and how expensive it was and how much of of your revenue, what's your budget for marketing in your practice? What do you recommend? I I would say that right now the most pediatric dental consultants would quote a two to four percent range uh, for your budget that you would put aside to use for marketing each year annually. That's a revenue of revenue. Of your revenue. revenue. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And and that can, you know, there's flexibility in there. I don't feel like that we do a ton of marketing because we truly rely on our patient families to go out and tell their friends. But I feel like that we don't we don't do nearly as much as what some other people tell me that they do. It's it's regional. It is definitely uh, kind of what your area drives you to be and how much competition there is in your area. But I would, as a round number, use two to four percent. So if I have a million dollar revenue practice, I should be spending twenty to forty thousand dollars. On marketing, correct. approximately, and more, perhaps, in some instances. If needed. Yeah, interesting. So uh, how do you get parents? You talked about parents before, and obviously I always say we should call our specialty parent dentistry, maybe not pediatric <laughs> dentistry, because it's all about the parents, right? Yeah, the truth, um, yes. And what about, you know, getting them to be ambassadors? You know, you're, obviously your patients love you. They're going to go talk about it. But what are some of the specific things you can do to get them to market on your behalf as ambassadors of the practice? Yeah, I love that word. I love that word, ambassadors. That's truly what they are. I think the first thing that we need to make sure that we drive home to our team is that we need to be grateful that our patients choose to come see us because there are choices uh, to go to other offices. Um, So customer service has to be at the very top of that list. And in that same breath, how you determine the the mission statement of your practice to be either production based and it's all driven by numbers or do you remember that the patient comes first and it's relationship based that is certainly our approach um, and i can't say it's the right approach always it's it's different for every person but in our office what works is a relationship based practice for that family member to feel like they are a part of our office family and in turn for us to feel like we are a part of theirs allows them to have the best experience possible that that it allows them to leave, go out and say, man, it has changed so much from when I went to the dentist as a kid. Right. Or they remembered that we went on a Disney cruise and asked me, how was our cruise? I couldn't believe that. Or right, sent a, right. a card to somebody who was sick or a family member who'd passed away. Those yeah, are makes small, a, big difference. Yeah. a huge difference. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's fantastic. So let's pause for a moment to hear a word from our sponsor. 
Hugh Freedy is the global leader in dental instrument manufacturing and infection prevention solutions that keep you performing at your best. For more information on Hugh Freedy products, visit HughFreedy.com slash AAPD crowns. That's Hugh Freedy.com slash AAPD crowns. And enter the promo code 2682 if placing an order for pedo crowns. We are back talking to Dr. Bobby Elliott, who for, who is practicing in near the Raleigh, North Carolina area. And we're talking about things you can do, simple things, complex things to, to market your practice. And we're discussing parents and how they can help us. So you see a parent in the operatory and you know they're on their phone all the time doing this and that. What can you can you take advantage of that opportunity? I, I absolutely love if parents are on their phone. One means they're not paying attention to what I'm doing, <laughs> which can be a good so, thing. So that can be a good thing because I can focus. Yeah, uh, right. But I also think, how can I ask them to uh, help us if they're on their phone? I just simply say, hey, by the way, while you're on there, can you like us on our Facebook page? <laughs> and, they're, and they're usually willing to do that. So that stuff makes a difference when you see somebody's got hundreds of likes or thumbs ups, and versus, yeah. you know, and I, we're not going to have time to talk about rating too much and, uh, you know, Yelps and all that controversy. But I know that's an, another subject that's related to this. It's really important. Um, so if you're, if a parent's looking at different options, where to go to a pediatric dentist, um, you know, what, what they're going to choose for their children, what's going to make them choose your practice based on the marketing things that you've done? Sure. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier on about the yellow page ad when I first put that in there. Unbeknownst to me, I just intuitively wrote on that ad, parents are welcome in the back because I wanted them to know that I wanted them to come be a part of their child's experience. But you remember back in our day as as, as kids who went to the dentist, they separated the, the adults, the parents from the children and it took the kids back by themselves. Well, that's what the memory of us having that wasn't so great. So I wanted them to know they could stay with their child uh, to come back for new patients and for cleaning visits and for operative visits. So parents have told me, we chose you because you advertised that we could stay with our child and come back. And to this day, now that we've moved away from yellow page edges, but to our Facebook page and to our, our, our web pages, we still continue that, that line of thought of, we want you to feel a part of the whole experience. That's fantastic. So, I mean, this is a, this is a pretty big part of your practice and you recommend it for others, obviously. So who do you recommend have the responsibility? Who's in charge of marketing? Is that you or is it somebody else in the office? Well, I think you need to ask your team, who, who has this skill set? Who's really good at Facebook or Instagram? Those are the people that you want to capitalize on because that's their natural tendency to to do uh, the marketing piece of that. They, they already have that drive. So why not maximize your the, the team member's skill set? So you have to kind of look around your team and ask who would like to do this or who is really good at this and, and, and play to their skill sets. I see. Yeah, that's God, it's so, there's so much to talk about, but I want to spend a little bit of time here as we're winding down on uh, social media. Obviously, that's sure. the buzz when you talk about buzz. And tell us, you know, how does social media work in the context of marketing a practice? What are some of the things you can do specifically? Give us some specific things that our audience, our listeners can take to their office next week mm -hmm. and think about doing. And, and how effective are they from a, measured, from a measurable standpoint? How do these things really work and how do they work? Without a doubt, social media has has surpassed any print ad or uh, newspaper or magazine article that's out there. No more yellow pages. You really should focus on the digital age. Your, our parents, our our patients, are tech savvy now. So the focus on social media should should be where you're you're spending the bulk of your time and money. Uh, branding is always going to be at the forefront. That whether it's a your logo or your web page or the wording in your web link. Those are the things that are going to identify your practice and make you... So you're talking about the branding that, that pervades all the postings on Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. having that same, developing a brand and having right. a consistent one that, that goes through all these platforms. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. And I think okay. there's definitely some algorithms that Google and different browsers use uh, to escalate you higher and higher to the top. And I can tell you that a couple of those are that you are changing something on your web page uh, weekly. So if you have something like a tip of the day, you should be choosing that to be something that changes every week so that that can escalate you in the algorithm. So things that change are more likely to be higher in the algorithm. Aren't these outside companies you can hire to 
they say they'll move you up in the search more than others. Is that, is that you that can? Work? There is a lot of it, it. It does work. Uh, I don't utilize it myself. I feel like that we um, are are pretty tight in our marketing budget on where we get the biggest ROI, the biggest return on our investment. Uh, we have people tell us they find us from the web all the time, but we have an intuitive name, Carrie Pediatric uh, Dentistry. So yeah, you don't, right. I feel like people who use something like brush and floss or kidstooth.com, those aren't intuitive names that people would type in if they moved to the area. Right. And are looking what is for what is what is hula frog? You told me in your comments about who. Tell me what hula frog is. Hula frog. It, that might be something that's that's local to our area, but basically it is an email. Sounds blast like it might be. Yeah, <laughs> that, that goes out to mo- mommy groups and to parent groups, people who move to the area. But it, it's advertisements that are marketed to moms that let them know what's kind of going on in their area for that week or that month. Okay, so you're you're piggybacking on something else, or, or are you the taking out? Yeah, we're, we're taking out advertisement space. Um, so you're, I see. You're On these email blasts that are going to parents for other purposes. That's right. But it's a targeted okay. group. It's mommy groups versus just going out to neighborhoods or to the entire area. So on your Facebook page, talking about Facebook or Instagram, and they're, they're owned by the same company, connected a lot more now. Mm-hmm. It seems like a lot of people are going more to Instagram than Facebook, by the way. But um, what – what do you do to make it work? I know you have to post regularly. Um, mm-hmm. What, what, what are some of the advice week. you would give? Twice a week, okay, twice a mm-hmm. week posting. And what about allowing other people to can, – can comments be posted by parents? Sure. Or do you not allow that? You can. You, you certainly should allow that, but it should be able to be monitored and approved prior to it going onto your Facebook page. So, so you, you check them all personally tool. or do you check them? Our marketing person does. Yep. We have one of our team members who does our marketing and our Facebook account. She will uh, approve every post prior to it going up to the Facebook page. Okay. And that's a you setting you have just, to put yourself. Yeah, that's right. You just don't want somebody to have free will to go out there and if they start bashing you that you can't control that. <laughs> so that right. would never make it to the page. But hopefully nobody has that ill will to do that. Okay. So can I assume if I see a comment on a dental office Facebook page, it's been screened or is that not always Typically, the case? It should be. It, it should I would be. say it should be. That's right. Okay. So how do you ask your patients or their parents – caregivers to recommend you to their friends. You know, it's kind of a, again, this all goes against the grain (laughs) for, you know, us older practitioners who were told don't market. And now I understand, and I agree with you, one needs to do this. So how do you get somebody and you need that to recommend you? It's awkward. So what do you do? It is awkward. I'd say that is not a hat that I like to wear or that I wear often. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not good at asking people to, to brag on our practice. But if someone initiates that conversation, if a parent pulls me off the side and says, you know, not many people can do what your team did today. And I just want you to know you've made a difference in my child's life. That's a good platform, open door opportunity to say, I appreciate those words and the fact that you took the time to tell me. Those are the words that could help other people who may be scared or reluctant to hear those words may encourage them to take that next step. Would you mind doing something similar, saying something similar and putting that up on a Yelp review or a Google review? And nine times out of 10, those parents are so honored that you ask them. It's just, it's me that has the issue, (laughs) The, the, the issue of asking, but I've found that people feel very appreciative and honored that you took the time to ask them that they have an opportunity to brag on your team and your practice. Yeah, I think that's, that is, I think a lot of uh, practitioners might feel uncomfortable, but I certainly understand that you don't ask, you don't get necessarily. And a lot of people would feel honored and that's an interesting situation. I think we could talk a lot more about that. Uh, In our limited time, I have one more area, just one more question uh, to talk to you about. And obviously when you're marketing, when you think of marketing one's practice, you're segmenting the population. That's what a marketing person would say. And you're looking at the various segments who might bring you patients, who might refer themselves or others to you. So who do you consider to be your strongest referral sources to yourself and to you and, and to pediatric dentistry in general? Yeah. Sure. I think without a doubt, our, our number one focus in all of our practices should, should be our patient families. They're the people who are going out and have firsthand accounts to say, hey, I had a great experience, or these people really been over backwards to accommodate us. They're going to be our first line of every strongest referral sources. So that's different. Uh, sec- I mean, we, we always learned it was pediatricians. That's not the case <laughs> anymore. The tr- I don't think it is. I, I think I, We have a mm-hmm. great relationship with our pediatricians, especially for 
for when they need to clear our patients for sedation. But I don't often have parents come in and say, hey, we came to you before age three because our pediatrician told us to two and a half years ago, you know, or two mm-hmm. years ago. And so I, they're, they're there, but they are in the background, I feel like, these days. Um, general dentists used to be a lot stronger of a referral source, but I think after the 08 uh, crunch hit that a lot of general dentists would like to hang on to their pediatric patients, their healthy ones, more so than saying, I'm just going to send all of my kids to a pediatric dentist. I don't see right. that. That was well, that's, part that's of that trend different. in the middle. I mean, you're doing this marketing because you want the referral. So it, it is obviously important to know who, where you're going to have the greatest success. So you're saying that's right. it's the families, it's the parents, it's your own patients. So that's therein right. lies the need to, to direct market. Um, what about, you know, just one or two in the last minute or so, uh, moment or so, what are some other entities that could help that could help you bring those patients in? Oh man, I'll tell you, one of my favorite resources have been mothers of multiples. This is a support Ah. group for twins and triplets. They absolutely love that you have called to ask if you could come speak with them about the ABCs of infant oral health care. Well, once they buy into that and and into you, let me tell you, when that phone rings, you're getting at least two or three new patients for every phone call. Every one. So that's right. I I, I used to say I wanted to limit my practice to family of four, families of four or more, and as as long as they show up, I. I had one. I had one family of nine in my practice, and if they all nice. showed up, it was a good afternoon. But no, I, I think that's those are some helpful hints. So I, I that's great, Bobby. Thank you so much for being with us today. And oh, it was a really, pleasure. it was a good bunch of bits of information that we can take to our office. And I thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And I thank our audience for tuning in for Tapito Teeth Talk, where we bring you the contemporary issues important to you and your practice. Brought to you by the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry. I'm your host, Joel Berg. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Pedo Teeth Talk is brought to you by the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, the show that delivers cutting-edge ideas for the professional specializing in pediatric dentistry. If you have any questions or comments, please email info at aapd.org. We welcome your ideas for future shows and guests. For more information on the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, visit aapd.org.